Good morning. I am Gerald. My wife Millicent is talking with someone right now, and she will be in shortly. So we're going to get started in about two to three minutes, but I did want to say good morning and let you know that we are live. So uh, the invite part, I got to work on that because she's not in here. But I do want to just say thank you for all of you all sharing the video from last week. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for continuing to support us, support us and just work with us. And we want to continue to give you the very best, the very best version of ourselves that we can possibly give you in the name of Jesus. So I'm going through right now with my limited computer access and I am inviting people as we speak. So we're going to continue to work and do what we can to best benefit families and give them an opportunity to just dive into God's word the best possible way that we can. So please forgive me for how this is starting, <laughs> but it's going to get better. So I'm still inviting people, but um, but we did get started. Um, well, no, we didn't. I got started like three minutes after. All right. All right. So <clears throat> one of the things that I want to share with you, because I know we're going to get started in a little bit, what we're going to be talking about today uh, is we're going to be talking about what to do when you don't understand God's word. You know, when things seem like they're like distant, you're going through something and you don't know what's going to be the next step. Uh, how do I get to the next phase of my life? That's what we're going to be discussing today. And so we have several scriptures that we're going to cover, and I'll make sure to repeat them so that you'll have an opportunity to write them down. So again, uh, my wife just walked her friend out. She'll be back in shortly. We definitely going to get us some coffee because we're sleepy, at least I am. But today is a new day. And it's an opportunity to give God praise. So with the fruit of my lips and with the air that is flowing through my lungs, I give God praise this morning for rising me up and giving me an opportunity to be among the living. Because if I'm among the living, I get another opportunity. So uh, blessings be unto you and your family. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, you are going to make it. You don't have to worry. You don't have to falter or fret. God is not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. And the process is not always easy, but I will say that the process is necessary. So continue to stay humble. You know, seek after God, chase after God, run after God. Make sure <clears throat> that you have a conversation with God each and every day. And that you invite Jesus into your heart to give you strength and that you allow for the Holy Spirit to minister to you when you are feeling um, sometimes overwhelmed or feeling like you're alone or feeling like, man, I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing by God. But I don't seem like I'm, in, I'm getting anywhere. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those are human feelings. And we all go through those. But. For those who love the Lord, they understand that he will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will not help you um, destitute and without. He will make sure that you have everything that you need in order to be successful, in order to be in good health, in order to have strength. And I hope that you understand that that is the truth. Uh, so I'm looking for some people to chime in. And I don't see chimers, so I don't know if it's something that I'm doing wrong. Oh, I'm so sorry. I can see it now. 
How you doing there, Mr. Diaz and Mr. Hey, Miss Judy, how you doing this morning? And so there'll be others chiming in. I'm so sorry. And let you know I don't know anything about technology. So I'm going to type in this real quick because with my little limited technical skills, uh, uh, you know, so good morning. And so I just want to let you know how much we appreciate you. And then I will type that in right quick. We definitely, we definitely, we definitely love you. So we want to have a great time of fellowshipping and getting into this word. Uh, I hope it doesn't look like I'm too dark because we've been trying to work with this halo light or whatever to try to get the light in here to be a little bit, not brighter, but so it won't look like it's the shadows and we have not yet mastered that yet. And so um, we want to focus on today. We want to focus on what to do when you don't understand God's word. When you don't understand the path or the journey of what you're facing. So our first scripture is going to come from Isaiah 55, and it's going to be verses 8 and 9. So let me get to that right now. And this is what it says. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So what that's telling me is there are going to be some situations in which you think that you have all the answers and that you know what all needs to be done. But God operates a little bit different from the way we think. And so when we're going through things, there's my beautiful my beautiful queen. And so we were we were helping someone because there is a uh, a prom tonight for Jones Futures Academy, and we were making sure that we had um, we had got some air tanks, and we wanted to um, give them all of them so that they could be able to blow up all the balloons and everything they need for tonight. So when we talk about or we discuss our thoughts and what we may think. Is saying that God's ways are higher than our ways. And when we try to understand them, when we try to um, figure him out, we can never do that. So it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So what, that, what we have to do as... Um, leaders of our own selves and as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ is that we need to trust God, trust Jesus and trust the Holy Spirit in the process. Because when we try to figure it out and then we come up with the answers, those answers don't always line up. So my wife is moving because the battery on the computer says 10%. We're really going through it this morning, but we're not going to end our um, broadcast and we're not going to lose lose weight. Oh, that's strong. All right. And so um, it's a good strong. So we just want to discuss that. So now our next scripture, we're going to talk. We're going to talk about hold on to God's promises and our first scripture. I want to talk to you about Hebrews 10 and um, I think it's Hebrews 10 and 23. And it says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. All right. Good morning, Miss Charlie. You ain't missed anything because, you know, I'm not by myself. My wife had to walk somebody out, Miss Charlie, so she's coming back. And then when she got back with the coffee, Miss Charlie, the computer said it's only 10% on the battery. So now the screen is finna light up. And now, woo, there it is. We have All right, good morning, everybody. <laughs> so now we can be together. Party. And so when we look at um, uh, Hebrews 
uh, is discussing and is talking about the confession. So again, when we are going through something and we don't understand God's word, that's when we can be still and know that God is looking out for us. So in Hebrews 10 and 23, it says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he, it says for who, it says for he who promised this faithful. I'm sorry, I didn't want to read that wrong. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised this faithful. That means that when God speaks a word, whether you um, understand everything or not, what, it, what we're saying is hold fast to your confession because God is faithful. Hold fast to your confession because God is faithful. And he's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. It says, for he who promised is faithful. He's going to take care of you in all situations. And if you look at other people's lives and try to compare them to yours, please don't do that because they are running their race and you're running your race. Mm -hmm. And the things you're going through is to build your character and to build your faith and to build your love, your compassion, and your patience and anything else that God is working with you in order to develop so that you can be the best version of yourself that you can be. Don't compare yourself to somebody else because they're running a different kind of race because they got different things they have to face. When you both are going through the same thing, then the only thing you can do is lift each other up. That's what you should be doing. Right. So when we talk about what to do when you don't understand God's word, then it said in Hebrews 10 and 23, let us hold fast to the uh, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. That is correct. But when we talk about the confession, we also can go back to Romans 10, 9. Because that's you confessing your sins, your sins before God. You know, if you confess and if you believe in your, if you confess your sins to God and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and was rose from the dead, then you are saved. And so, because of that, you are entering into a family with benefits that are unbelievable. You don't know all the benefits. I don't think anybody knows all the benefits that are, that are in the Word of God. And if you do, my hat is tipped to you. But I think that. A part of uh, learning and understanding the benefits is being able to search God for what his word says when you need it or when somebody else needs it and you looking it up so that you can help somebody else. So, um, okay. Is that the right kind of uh, plug? That's a, if you go and look in my drawer, the third drawer, bring, bring an HP plug. Okay, so please forgive us, but we got to get the right plug, or we ain't gonna have no no no, no broadcast. So we have seven percent. We got two kind of computers, so it's an HP and a and a, and a Dell. And I think she got the Dell plug, but it doesn't matter. We are blessed. We're highly favored. You're blessed, and you're highly favored. And when you don't understand God's word, I want you to hold on to His promises. So when we talk about confession, confess your sins, yes. But it's also talking about the confession that, hey, you have a hope in somebody that you may not see, but you know that they're there. You can feel them. You know that they are part of your life. All right. Charles Zelda Carter, good morning. And so, uh, Charles Zelda, we're talking about what to do when you don't understand God's word, when you don't understand. And so... I have read things in the Bible and seemed like I was more confused after I read it than when I than when I did. So when I feel that way, I just say, God, help me to break all of this down. And so when I start looking at different words and different verbiage, I will take that one word and I will find something that will be able to help me get to another scripture. And of course, in the concordance. Or when you're looking at a group of scriptures, they'll have some other ones that support those. And so we try to do that. So my wife will be back in about 30 seconds because we had the wrong plug. And we're trying to make sure that that this broadcast doesn't shut off because I see it blinking now. Oh, yeah. We got power now. We got the right plug because the screen just got a lot brighter. And so I don't look as dark. 
even with this extra life. So my wonderful wife is back. Miss Charlie is with us. Miss Charles Ella Carter is with us. And so mm -hmm. our next scripture we're going to talk about, and I want you to chime in maybe where you can because husband is um he's doing okay, but I don't know how well I'm doing without you. So we're going to look at Romans 8, 35 through 37. And so this is where the rub is going to hit the road. And so let me see. It says, um, this is really interesting. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yeah. But this is what God says. Yet in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So I'm going to turn the page back because it says, who shall separate us from the love of God, love of Christ? Shall it be tribulation? And the answer is no. We all gonna go through tribulation. We all gonna go through times where we feel like we're just gonna die. Mm -hmm. But it's not tribulation that's gonna separate you from God because He's the one that gives you life and gives you strength to face the tribulation, even though you feel like you can't. Will it be distress? Stress comes from all different kinds of ways, and sometimes stress don't come from nothing but our own self. Sometimes we create our own stress. But if it's stress, God says, "I have an answer for that." It says. Uh, Persecution. You're going to be talked about if you say you believe in God. If you say you believe in Jesus. If you say you're trying to change your life for the better, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be talked about. You're going to be made a mockery of. They're going to make fun of you. Mm -hmm. They're going to do those things. Good morning. You want to say hi real quick? Just a quick wave. Come on, oh, say hi goodness. to the people. To Leah Diddy, why you can't come over here and say hi? Just do it one way, but she's not going to do it. She's not going to do it. So, good morning, Tabitha. Good morning, Tabitha. So it says persecution or famine or nakedness. Famine, you know, sometimes your finances can be hit with famine. Sometimes uh, your home can be hit with famine. Right. This breaks down. You fix this, this breaks down. You fix this, this breaks down. So sometimes your home can be hit with famine. Sometimes your faith can be hit with famine. But, and it says peril or sword, as it is written, for your sake and for my sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep to the slaughter because that's what the devil thinks he's doing when we go through famine, when we go through tribulation, when we go through stress, when we go through peril, or when we fall at the sword. It says, but yet, this is what God says. He said, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors to him who loved us. That means that he built you to be able to be an overcomer. But it just, it just depends on what your mindset is, you know, because you can get separated from him. But it will be by your own choice. Because if your mind is not stayed on him, not focused on him, and he's not your, your strong tower, your safe haven, mm -hmm. you feel lost and you don't know what to do. So it all depends on, again, what your mindset is. And the way that you address that is one you want to connect with people that have a love for christ mm -hmm. not religion please not that a love for christ not religion not procedural things right we're talking about a god that's uncommon we're talking about a god that doesn't change in what he says his word will do the word accomplishes everything it does every single day. If you want proof, you go back to Genesis. In the first six days, when he say he arranged the stars, they still shine at night. That he illuminates the world with light. And we know that the sun is 
however many million billion miles away i don't know i can't quote that right now but all of that is occurring every day the earth is spinning on its axis and we're still on the ground and we're not floating because of the gravitational pull all of these things he has in order not just in america but in spain in africa in antarctica australia in asia the world is still in its place so he has not wavered in his faithfulness from the six days that he worked and on the seven days on the seven day when he rested please understand i want you to get that he is faithful there is a day there is a night there is a god and there is a devil the devil is under the feet of those who believe that God is who he is, that his son died for us, and that the Holy Spirit is here to guide us. He said, you're never alone because I sent the comforter. But again, what Millicent said is very clear, that you and your mindset has to be focused on the goodness of Christ. And if you are a person that does not know God, I challenge you to get into a quiet place and just say, God, I need your help. You don't know where it's going to come from. I don't think it's going to come from a Christian. It may not even be a Christian. <laughs> when you say, God, I need your help, it may be a person that be going along their way, and God may quicken them to say, hey, I need you to go do this. <laughs> it may not even be a Christian. See, I'm telling you, our thoughts are not his thoughts. Please don't get into that kind of thinking. But that person could be the very person that you uh, need right then and right there. I want you to think about a time in your life when you saw someone and they gave you an encouraging word and you never saw them again, ever, that is the weirdest thing. But it's also the most beautiful thing, too, because that means that God saw in his infinite wisdom that you needed what you needed right then. And whether it was a human being or whether it was an angel, you, you, you got what you needed. For me, it's amazing because I don't believe that you could see someone and like never see them again. Like you don't see them ever. To me, that's a that's different. I believe that in those times in my life, God sent an angel to tell me something. And because more than likely, you know, if you see somebody, I don't care if it's four or five years down the line, you'll see them again somewhere. But when you never see a person again ever, that's like to me. That's God sending his angel to just give me some comfort to let me know that, hey, I had to go on and get a little, uh, I had to go a little deeper with you, sir, because uh, I see you were struggling. And with the human beings, you wasn't wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't getting it. So I sent somebody to just tell you something so that you know that it couldn't have been nobody else but me because nobody else knew that. That's what I'm talking about when he doesn't leave you and he doesn't forsake you. Now, we're going to go into uh, Psalms 55 and verse number 22. And we talked about this last week. It says, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. God is going to sustain you. But you got to go after him like you go after a man that you want to get his attention or you go after a woman that you want to get her attention. You get all nice, you get all handsome, you get pretty up, you get your nails done, you get your hair cut, you make sure you got all it smells good. Because why? You want that person and only that person and nobody else to get your attention. So, But in, in casting your burden, that means give it to him and don't take it back. Mm -hmm. Please don't take it back. We do that so many times. I know I've been guilty of it. You know, I did it quite a bit mm -hmm. until you get tired of going around on the, what is it, the hamster wheel? The treadmill. Yeah, the, <laughs> the treadmill, the like hamster wheel, whatever. You get, you get tired of that and then when you realize, you know, I gave it to him, but then I took it back. Yeah. And, you know, that doesn't do us any good. That doesn't allow, and it doesn't allow your faith to grow. You know, and so then when you try to believe him for something else and it doesn't happen, mm -hmm. see, I knew I shouldn't have tried that. It wasn't going to work anyway. Mm -hmm. 
but you're doing the same thing, you know, so give it to him, let him have it, just trust him and believe that he will take care of it. Yeah, and then why would you want something to be on your shoulders that you could actually get off your shoulders? Why would you want to have the burden sitting on you when you can give it to God and you can free your mind of that and you can be focused on other things? Excuse me, because the thing is, if you if you're trying to move on with life and God is giving you a pathway to do that mm -hmm. and all you have to do is give that to him, then the other time you can be focused on studying or you can be focused on hearing his voice and what step you take next. But then with the hamster wheel, because you don't trust God, because you won't wait, because you won't allow the word mm -hmm. to manifest itself and do what it's supposed to do and that is win. That is win, that is win. That's what the word does, win. And so when you don't allow for it to win, then you have to do the, you know, the constantly moving around and hitting your head against the wall. Good morning, Miss, uh, who is that, Miss Doreen? Good morning. Good morning. So good morning. And so when we talk about that, Psalms 55 and verse number 22, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Well, I'm not being moved. Check your righteousness. You know, well, I do things. We all do things. But your heart should be crushed and your heart should feel a burden of, 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 of something when you do something that you know is contrary to what God asked you to do. And when you feel like that, that means you're on the right track because you have a conscience and you have a spirit man that's saying, hey, I want to connect to God. I don't want to connect to this. Mm -hmm. I want to believe and trust God for this, but I don't want to go this way. And the God already tells you in his word, he say, what I want to do, I don't do. And what I should do, I, I, I don't. So I you draw to the things that I shouldn't, and I run away from the things that I, I shouldn't. That's all. Human behavior. Yeah. And God said he knew that. So that's why he said, trust him. He understands you're going to make mistakes, but he wants you to learn from him and not make the same ones. So that means if, if you do something that's wrong or you know that's wrong and, and you don't feel <clears> that or you don't hear that little voice or whatever, mm -hmm. you check your spirit needle because mm -hmm. something's not right. Something's not right. And so I'm not sitting here, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not sitting here saying that I'm perfect and I don't make mistakes. I refuse to sit there and lie to you on this. What pastor say, if, if we were, mm -hmm. if we were perfect, I wouldn't be sitting here looking at you. You wouldn't be looking at me. So we wouldn't be looking at each other. That's right. right. <laughs> and so um, that's one of the things that I want us to be very clear about. Again, the title of the message is what to do when you don't understand God's word. And what you should do is you should wait and ask God to give you clarity when you don't understand stuff. Be still, don't move. But what but but the faithfulness and the promises of God, they do not change. That's right. They do not change. And so I want to share another scripture with you. And it is, let me see. I think it's, it's Romans. Okay, what page am I on? Wrong page. I think it's Romans 8 and 28. And Romans 8 and 28 says this. Uh, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. That is Romans 8 and 28. All things work together for the good. But see, you got to understand, it says to those who love God. <laughs> all things not going to work together for the good. Right. When you acting like a devil, when you acting like you don't have a heart, when you don't have no compassion, when you don't have no love, when you don't have no respect. No, it's not going to work together for the good for you. It says, as we and we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. That's why I like to sit here and just go through and try to diagnose the word the best I can. I ain't speaking for God. I'm just understanding that it ain't going to work together for the good if you don't what? It says to those who are who to love God. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. 
So if you don't love God, ain't nothing going to work together for the good for you. And ain't going to work together for the good for us. If you don't love God, if you love God, then all things work together for uh, the good. That means that when you are facing famine, we, hey, good morning, Tori. We appreciate you chiming in with us. We are talking about what to do when you don't understand God's word. So in Romans 8 and 28, we're talking about the good and how things work together, but only to those that love him. And if you're a person and you're really trying to understand and grow in God, then just start with that. Confess whatever you have done in your life. Don't allow your past faults, and failures, and decisions define who you are in this present time. Right. When you give it to God, and we can go back to the word of God with Psalms 55 and 22, where it says, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit his righteousness to be moved. So that means that when you cast your cares upon the Lord, leave them there. When you confess your sins to God, leave them there. Right. If you hear a voice in your head tell you all the things that you did and how you're not worthy and how you don't amount to anything, that is not God. There's only two people doing that. That's you mm -hmm. and the devil. God is telling you that you're strong, that you are powerful, that you can do all things through his love that strengthens you. That's right. So when you cast those burdens upon the Lord, he's saying he will sustain you. And when we go back to Romans 8 and 28, where it says that we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God. Confess your sins to God. Romans 10 and 9. If I confess my sins and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then I'm saved. So when you do that, you don't have to allow for what you did in the past to rip you up so that you don't have a future. So I really want to make sure that you get that, right. that you can make it, that you will make it, that nothing on this world will stop you. But there are some things that we need to make sure that we understand when we go in and then we examine God's word. I ain't adding nothing to it. I ain't taking nothing away. I'm understanding that if all things don't work together for the good, then I actually have to love God. And loving God means I need to love the people that I come in contact with. I may not like some of the things they do, but I have to exercise the word of God, meaning that when they treat me bad, even though I don't like it, if there's an opportunity, if there's an opportunity for me to help them, as much as I might not want to, and God is saying, "Hey, if you really want to prove who you are mm -hmm. and what you believe in and how you are one of my children, then you will put down your pride and you will go help that person that despitefully used you and then they tried to stab you in the back. And then I'm going to show you how you can gain a friend in Christ, and then you can take somebody." that was despicable and just won't do right and they're going to be your biggest cheerleader. But you know in order for us to do that that calls for, that calls, calls for us to constantly examine ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know because if we're not taking inventory mm -hmm. you know and paying attention to what we do I'm not seeing to be critical of yourself but just mm -hmm. take you know just take inventory, just pay attention. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't right or you said something that may not have come across right, mm -hmm. you know, just ask God to reveal it to you and say, you know, how could I have done that in a better way uh -huh. that would exemplify what you are about? Yes. Because that's the hook. Jesus was, you know, I mean, some of the people that followed the Lord was a fisherman. And you got to be crafty to catch a fish. You know, because they understand. You can't see them, and they down there. They, they get to whatever they want. Though, know, why you, they're underwater? Mm -hmm. But you got to be crafty in how you do it. And so, there are things that we have to really focus on when we're serving God, especially when we're new Christians, 
when we are seasoned and when we are really trying to just, um, I'm trying to think of a word, when we're really trying to put to death some of the things that need to die in our lives mm -hmm. so that we can really take in more of his righteousness. So the things that we that need to die out of our heart, the things that need to die out of our mindset, right. we die to those things and we allow for God to come in and replace that foolishness or the things that don't um, give him glory and we take in that, then people are going to see that mm -hmm. because they know you're not faking around. And so I got another scripture I want to share with you, and this is it's in Isaiah 41 and 10. It says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is going to uphold you when you're going through all this stuff. And I don't understand why I'm doing it. I don't understand why I got to go through this, Lord. I don't appreciate this. I don't like this. I don't, I don't, I don't want to go through this. You have to. And you know, something else I, I learned about that, too, is that instead of griping and whining and complaining while you're going through that, you know, and Ms. Bass used to tell me this all the time, is even in the bad stuff, mm -hmm. try to find the good in it. Mm -hmm. You know, so instead of crying and whining and complaining, you know, just say, God, what is it that you're trying to teach me mm -hmm. out of the situation? What are you trying to show me that will either help me or use it to help somebody else? That's difficult to do. Again, all things that work together for the good for those who love God. Right. So it's hard for you to grasp onto something when we don't even trust God. God enough to know the, the process, no matter how despicable or no matter how it stretches us, mm -hmm. it's necessary. That process is necessary for your mental, spiritual, and physical growth as a person, as a Christian, and as a light. And so I'm going to go back to the main scripture. When we started off, I think we started off, we started off with, um, uh, we started off with Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, but I wanna I wanna um I wanna go back to well I'll I'll, I'll I'll go back to two scriptures. So I'll say I'll, I'll say Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, mm -hmm. and it's talking about for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, mm -hmm. so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So when you're going through this, don't try to figure it out like you're going to think for God because you cannot. And so everything and all the different facets and the things that you do and go through, understand that if you really want to challenge God in his uh, infinite wisdom, you'll trust him in the process mm -hmm. and you'll seek after what seems to be um, maybe a a, a space of, 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 of just, I don't know. I'll just say that. And in that, I don't know, God will give you the next step. Right. I think that we want to run when we need to walk. <laughs> and then when we can't walk, we won't crawl. You got to crawl, then walk, then run. Right. And so nobody wants to crawl. They want to walk and run. But you got to crawl. And when you crawl, it's uncomfortable because your knees are on the ground and you don't like that. You want to know why everybody else standing up and you want to see that's how life is. And we said, don't compare. She's standing up. He's standing up. But Lord, I'm crawling. I'm barely getting through. Well, while you complain to me about what you barely doing, uh, okay, I'm going to let you go on and get on that thing, that treadmill thing and run around. Mm -hmm. And then when you're ready to get off of that, when you're ready to trust me, then you know, well, here it comes. You're going to see what the next step is. So if you're crawling and your knee hits the ground, that, that step, that's the one you need to do. If you're walking, that next step is what you need to do. If you're running, that next step is what you need to do. Good morning, Miss Deborah good White. Good morning, Mama White. And good morning, Miss Beverly Calhoun. I miss my hugs. <laughs> and so I did talk about Isaiah 55, 8, 9, and now... We go to uh, Romans, uh, Romans 8, 
35 through 37. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall it be tribulation? The answer is no. Or distress? The answer is no. Or persecution? The answer is no. Famine or nakedness? The answer is no. Or peril of sword? The answer is no. As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all the day long, mm -hmm. meaning that you are dying every day, but what are you replenishing yourself for the living? So skin cells die every day. Take a bath, dirt falls off you. That's the truth. You, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. It says, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ, through him who loved us. You are a conqueror. You are a winner. You are a champion. You are an overcomer. You are a high stepper. I don't know. I mean, you can step over things. You are a mountain climber. Oh, yes, you yeah. surfer at the top of the highest wave and you don't get washed out. And so that comes from acknowledging that you don't know everything. You don't have all the answers. God does, but he don't have to give them to you. Not in the order that you think you should receive them. Right. We should seek after him no matter what we face. We should strive or look or search for him because he deserves that. Because he's given us a platform. Mm -hmm. He's given us a foundation. We can either choose to stand on that foundation or we can choose to do other things. I choose to stand on that foundation. I choose to search after him even though I can mess up and trust me, I can and sometimes will. But I know who to go back to. Right. I know who I have to sit in the car and pray to or to my closet or in the restroom or walking around outside in the driveway. And we, I find a way to get to it. And it ain't always to ask for something. It ain't always to say, Lord, what I need. Because what I need ain't always monetary. What I need ain't always a gift or something. What I need is to make sure that I'm connected. Right. And if I'm connected, that means that I don't have to look for something because it said, it said that, where are we going to go back to that word? We're going to go back to that word. I think it's over here. Let me see. Where did I see that at? It said in Psalms 55 and 22, cast your burden on the Lord. And he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Mm -hmm. But you got to cast your cares on him. And like Millicent said, leave, leave the cares there. And he shall sustain you. That means he shall give you the next part of your meal, the next step. The Please next trust no, we never said it was going to be comfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> People don't grow if they, if they, you're not going to grow by being comfortable. Right. You're going to grow, you're going to grow in the uncomfortable things of life. Just like we talked about uh, how a diamond is made uh, yes. a couple of weeks ago. That's a hard process, the pressure. Mm -hmm, the heat. The heat, you know, mm -hmm. when we go through all of that. 170,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. That's what it takes to even start the forming process of a diamond. The temperature has to be so hot, and I can't remember the, the degrees. It might have been 2,000 degrees, but whatever it is, it happens because of an eruption from a mountain, from a volcano. Mm -hmm. And because of that eruption and all that pressure, boom, and all that heat and ash and what people see to be nothing that is uh, profitable or nothing that is a blessing because when a volcano erupts, it destroys things. Right. It shakes the earth, sometimes causes earthquakes, sometimes causes tsunamis. When a volcano erupts underneath the water, you don't know that it's erupting, but that's how it produces a tsunami. And so through all that devastation and stuff, then a diamond can be forged. And what's so interesting about those diamonds is that when you put them under a certain light, 
and shine a different light on them, they cast out a different light based on how much carbon or the less carbon is in them. I mean, we really took the time to look at the process of what that takes, and it is a long, uh, drawn out process in order to cast out some of the most beautiful and unique type of stones in the world. And you know something else that resonated with me too when when the guy was talking about the the, the different diamonds and mm -hmm. he showed the different light on mm -hmm. how they cast different colors. Mm -hmm. He was saying the ones that have them have more flaws mm -hmm. that they thought they were more prices. Mm -hmm. And he also said the ones that have the most flaws cast out the less light. <laughs> he said those are the ones that are more expensive. That's what right. the same thing Nielsen said. I was like, less light. So the ones, the ones that have the most flaws are the ones that get the most blessing. Uh -huh. Yeah, because we understand that we need to cast our cares on him. But the process is not always pleasing and the process is not the road always highly traveled. Because that's what he said, too. So he was saying, I guess, people that are not trained and, and don't really know <clears> that <throat> the diamonds that have more flaws, mm -hmm. regular people thought that they were less valuable. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the same thing, you yeah. know, with us, when we have flaws and scars, mm -hmm. you know, but that's our testimony of the things that God has brought us through. Mm -hmm. So we're valuable to, yeah, to the maker. Valuable. Yes, ma'am, yeah. we're valuable. Yeah. So... We are so excited about the things that God is doing for you. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know what those things are. So what I want you to do is make sure that you share those things among uh, us to say what God is doing in your life. You know, put it out there that God is blessing you, that God is sustaining you, that God is making a way where it seems like it's no way, that God is prospering you in your job, prospering you in your health prospering you in your mindset and your thinking, mm -hmm. prosper, prospering in your relationship building, you know. Because you have to remember your testimony helps to help others to build their faith because yes. if they don't, some people are just like it. If they don't see what God is doing in other people's lives, mm -hmm. sometimes they don't think it's even possible. They don't think it's possible. So we have to, it's important to, to share your testimony. Yes. But well, why even try? If I ain't going to if I don't see the benefit in it and I don't see where you are even showing that you are having any, you know, blessings or anything. Right. Why What's trying? the point of me even Why? trying, you know, so, so we just want, think about that. So we want you to have a great and exciting day. Okay. Pray for me that I get my lawnmower fixed because it is <laughs> damaged to so it's bad and I need to cut my grass. So, also, uh, something else too. We started a Facebook page for just for marriage matters. So that's what I'm going to work on today yeah. is try how to uh, merge it. So if you see that you get a, a Facebook friend request from Marriage Matters, just know it's us. You know, so because we're trying to get the page just for the Marriage Matters. Yes. Also. Um, we still download them on YouTube, so yeah. like it, share it, you know, because we're just trying to help build up the faith of others, yes. you know, and um, so we just all stay connected and bring new people into the kingdom of God. So. Yes, and we're really reaching out to those that are single that are, are thinking about getting married. Right. We want you to get, you know, get into a Bible-based church, make sure that you get the counseling so that you can understand what you're going to embark upon. This is, um, uh, what was weird was I was looking at Family Feud yesterday and Steve Harvey was on there and they had a question and it said, in today's society, name the percentage of something of how people actually consider or take their vows seriously. And a lady said, five. And the answer was like almost two. And that's really bad. Two percent? Yeah. No, she was just if between one and ten. Uh -huh. He said a name where people actually take their vows seriously. She wow. said five and that wasn't even the number one answer. It was lower. So that tells me that, you know, when people don't 
take marriage seriously right. or they enter in under false pretenses or they try it out because they think it's like going to uh, TJ Maxx or Dillard's or, or Macy's or, or wherever you go to shop and to try on something that if it don't work, keep the receipt and you can take it back type attitude. You know, that's a slap in the face of God because in the institute marriage to be in that way. Right. He wanted you to get, you know, he wanted you to be able to have a like-minded spouse that loves him, that loves you, and y'all can grow together, and your strength can be her strength, and her strength can be your strength, because all the things that I'm strong in, she's not, and all the things that she's strong in, I'm not, but together, we can make a very powerful uh, team, so um, I just reach out to those that are single, that are looking to be married, we want you to really, you know, dive into God's word, we want you to pray, and we don't want you to take the first fish on the hook, you know, it may have the appearance of this, that, and the other, but you you, you try the spirit and you you watch. And when right. you start seeing things that pop up that are red flags, don't ignore them. They are, that's the truth of who they are. <laughs> Please don't ignore them thinking that you're going to change them, fix them, make them to conform to what you want, what you want them to be. That will never happen. And they say, they never say that will never happen. You have to understand that that's a person. They have a heart, a mind, and a spirit, and if their spirit ain't lined up with what God's word and yours is, it's going to be difficult to um, get uh, any kind of um, unity in a, in, a, in a situation like that. So we're going to stop, and we're going to actually go try to find something in here to eat. Yay. We want you to have a great and outstanding Saturday. We love you. Be blessed. And remember, uh, we love you. Your marriage matters because your marriage matters. matters. Thank you, sweetheart. All right. And we'll see you next weekend. Bye. And have a great Memorial Day weekend. Thank you. Have fun and stay safe. Yes.